As millions of sperm flood the reproductive tract, only one sperm will actually make contact. After a long journey of survival, this lucky one succeeds in penetrating the egg. Immediately after penetration, the egg undergoes a chemical reaction that prevents other sperm cells from following suit. Both genetic materials merge together, forming a new cell called a zygote. The zygote divides multiple times as it travels down the fallopian tube towards the uterus. The zygote enters the uterus in 3 to 5 days. In the uterus, the cells continue to divide, becoming a hollow ball of cells called a blastocyst. The blastocyst implants in the wall of the uterus about 6 days after fertilization. After the implantation, the human embryo starts growing and maturing for the next nine months until the birth for a new life. During the last weeks of pregnancy, the baby will continue to gain weight and accumulate more body fat. As the baby grows larger, the uterus expands. The mother may experience increased discomfort, especially in the lower back, pelvis, and abdomen. In preparation for birth, the baby may start change the position, such as shifting from side to side, or rotating within the womb. Most babies settle into a head-down position in the mother's pelvis, with their head closer to the birth canal. This position, known as cephalic presentation, is considered ideal for vaginal delivery. Some contractions can occur as early as the second trimester, but they become more noticeable in the last weeks of pregnancy. When labor approaches, true labor contraction occurs. True labor contractions have a regular pattern and become increasingly frequent, longer, and more intense over time. They lead to gradual dilation of the cervix. The cervix continues to dilate to 10 centimeters. The amniotic sac rupture or water breaking can occur at different times during labor. It may rupture on its own without any intervention. If the amniotic sac hasn't ruptured naturally, the doctor may intentionally rupture the amniotic sac using an instrument called an amniotomy hook. During childbirth, the relaxin hormone in the body helps soften and loosen the ligaments and tissues in the pelvic area. This allows the vaginal walls to become more flexible and stretchy. Then the cervix begins to change in preparation for delivery. It starts to soften, thin out, and dilate. Once the cervix is fully dilated, the mother enters the pushing stage. She actively pushes during contractions to help move the baby down the birth canal. During the pushing stage, the baby's head emerges first, followed by the rest of the body. As your baby's head passes through the birth canal, it molds into an elongated shape. Your baby's heads start to rotate under the pubic bone, something we call baby crowning. The baby's shoulders rotate to align with the pelvic outlet, allowing a smooth passage through the birth canal. Your baby's shoulders are delivered one by one in order to fit through your pelvis. Once the shoulders emerge, the rest of your baby slides out easily. After your baby is born, the umbilical cord is clamped and cut, separating the baby from the placenta. 
That will taking us to the last stage, after birth. The mother will continue to have contractions to deliver the placenta. The placenta separates from the uterine wall and is expelled and delivered. This stage typically lasts from 3 minutes to 30 minutes after baby's birth. The healthcare provider can help the baby to start breathing by gentile massage the skin to stimulate the respiratory system. Your baby will be dried and then wrapped in warm towels or blankets. Skin-to-skin -skin contact with your baby and a first breastfeed will be encouraged. Congratulations, you are officially a new mother. Thank you for watching this video. Please watch my other videos if you like the 3D medical animations. Don't forget to subscribe.